Hey, I'm Emma Garlett and welcome to Paint It Black. This week, I had the privilege to pick some of the brains of our most powerful Aboriginal leaders from across Australia. These people have been activists and trailblazers for Indigenous rights across a number of industries, including law, history, the arts and the justice system. They want to make the future better for Aboriginal people and through the work they have already done, they have. They have been in this game for a long time. They've seen the creation and abolishment of ATSIC and they've seen the numerous Aboriginal statements handed to government to ask for the government to listen, some of which include the Yurikala Bark petitions and the Barunga statement. There's not much they haven't seen. So I asked them what they thought of the voice to parliament and whether they think it's a good thing and if they think it will achieve the results we need. Join me as I paint it black. Recently, I ventured off from Perth, got on a plane and travelled across to Melbourne, also known as Nam. Lucky for me, the sun was shining as I headed off to the inaugural Reconciliation Lecture held by the National Centre for Reconciliation, Truth and Justice. This is what Professor Andrew Gunston at Federation University had to say. So the university is strongly committed to the Ulrich Statement from the Heart and also strongly committed to supporting First Nations voice to Parliament. So we've found in all our discussions around Australia with people, there's a lot of goodwill out there, but there's also a lot of misunderstandings of what the voice to Parliament is about. And to me, it's pretty simple, is that Indigenous peoples need to be involved in decisions that are impacting upon their lives. And one of the key things that I've seen in my many years being in academia is when you're working with Indigenous communities in self-determining reciprocal partnerships, the outcomes are demonstrably more successful than if there's no involvement from Indigenous people. The voice to Parliament was one of the main themes of the event. Noel Pearson is a lawyer, an academic, a land rights activist and founded the Cape York Partnership. Noel has written many books, with his most recent being Mission, Essays, Speeches and Ideas. Noel spoke to the audience, no notes, unbroken eye contact and used strong hand gestures to convey his message. He knew what he was talking about and why it was important. He wanted us to know too. We have to address the structural circumstances that have resulted in more people being in jail in Cape York today than in the 1970s. At the conclusion of the speech, no one was left sitting. He received a standing ovation. I got to speak to Noel before the event. We spoke about what the voice to Parliament will achieve. It's a terrible prospect to contemplate uh, this referendum losing because I don't think a legislator and a voice alone will achieve the, um, the kind of shift that's needed in the relationship between Indigenous people and government. A legislated voice, we have had legislated structures in the past and uh, the governments have just pressed, pressed delete and got rid of them. And so the constitutional guarantee of the voice is a crucial aspect of this reform. If there are similar models overseas? So in, the, in Northern Europe, there are similar structures that give the ability to Sami groups to speak to governments across the Arctic Circle, the various governments, about policies and issues and laws affecting them. And, you know, the, it's, it, it has resulted in, in much more careful uh, recognition um, of the rights of the Sami people. And what to do with the situation in Western Australia where people are tying the new cultural heritage laws to the voice? This unscrupulous use of issues like the heritage protection legislation um, is, is, has got to be exposed, there's got to be discussion about it. The destruction of Dukan Gorge was a result of um, inadequate legislation and inadequate um, protections and they needed to be addressed. And I think, you know, every jurisdiction, including Western Australia, is honestly trying to deal with um, heritage protection and, and addressing the problems that fell out of Dukan Gorge, whilst at the same time enabling development to take place. Noel sits on the federal government's referendum working group, along with Dr Jackie Huggins AM. 
She's currently advising the Queensland Government on the process of truth-telling and future treaties with Indigenous peoples. As someone who's worked in the field for about 44 years, I'm uh, wanting change so badly and I want a better outcome for our future generations. And if we vote yes, we're voting not only for, um, for the voice, but we're also voting for treaty, self-determination, social justice, and walking together as all Australians. So reconciliation is very important there too. I spent the morning speaking to other prominent and well-respected academics and senior government leaders. It's really important because it will give the constitution honour in a way that it's lacked since 1901. It will also improve the way that Australian governments make policy. I would say for our young Aboriginal people, um, listen to your elders first and foremost, uh, but also have a voice and um, make sure people listen and if they don't continue, um, we need justice for our people and we need the truth to be told. And the only way to do that is to keep talking until somebody listens and then we're able to action that. It's important we take the time to listen to many of our senior Aboriginal leaders as they have worked tirelessly to advance the rights of Indigenous people in Australia and are experts in their field. They only want the best for all of us. Thanks for watching Paint It Black with me, Emma Garlett. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode.